Audi, Immortalium here, and today I thought I'd discuss something that I thought was, um, you know, I, I've been meaning to discuss it for a very long time, but I haven't gotten around to it, um, but a recent event kind of inspired me to actually start discussing it, um, and I believe it's a very important uh, thing for the anime industry, so, uh, and I don't see this discussed much online either, um, so I thought I'd discuss this, and that is Noitamina, which is a, you know, anime programming block in Japan. Now, I can imagine several of you guys kind of going, wait, what? Anime programming block, you know, in Japan? You know, why are you discussing this? Why is that important? Um, well, I'll tell you why it's important, but before that, I just want to kind of give a bit of a background. So, um, there's a TV channel in Japan called Fuji TV, and Fuji TV is one of the biggest. Um, certainly in anime, it's one of the biggest. It airs the most popular, like the most viewed um, anime in all of Japan, Sezai san um, they air One Piece, which of course I probably don't need to mention at this point. It's so utterly popular. Um, they've aired Dragon Ball, and recently they've started airing Dragon Ball Z Kai. Um, and until recently they aired Toriko. So they've aired a lot of really popular anime series. But back in about 2005, I think it was, um, they set up a programming block called Noitamana. Now, uh, just as an interesting little fact, if you read Noitamana and then actually make it backwards, it's actually animation. But the purpose of this programming block was to expand the target audience of anime. Uh, back then, and I would argue it hasn't really changed much since then, um, the main anime audience in Japan uh, was kind of young uh, male men. And that was it. Uh, there wasn't really much outside of that group. so. This programming block it came around and said, "Okay, we're going to expand the audience." And uh, in fairness, they've um, you know made a lot of anime series aimed at other audiences. Uh, I'm going to include a link um, to the Wikipedia page uh, down below, um, so you can check out all those programs. But uh, I'll just give you a couple of examples: uh, Honey Clover, that's one of them; uh, Paradise Kiss; um, Eden of the East. Eden of the East is one of the most popular ones. Body Drop which um, actually is the thing that inspired me to start uh, discussing this uh, because recently MVM, which is a UK anime company, announced that they've gotten the license to distribute Bunny Drop, which you know I'm really happy about. And so, um, you know, I think it, it's a very important uh, programming block, uh, but there are some flaws with it. And I just want to kind of bring attention to some of the flaws. Of, one is that it airs after one o'clock in the morning, which is kind of standard for most late night anime. So, so it just seems a bit kind of uh, self-defeating there. Like, um, you know, you want to expand your target audience, but you're still airing it after one o'clock in the morning. So that surprised me. Um, another thing that surprised me and has quite disappointed me is the prices for these um, series. Um, they're the same price as normal anime releases, which is about like 60 bucks, 50 bucks, um, you know, for about two or three episodes of a series. Which, you know, of course is completely outrageous, but that's normal anime prices. And I was thinking, if you really want to expand your audiences to, you know, more casual people, to, um, you know, to, uh, you know, females or males that are so, you know, fanatical about this, um, then you should actually reduce your prices, you know, at the very least, maybe, I don't know, third them, make it about 20 bucks for a couple of episodes, even though that still seems quite pricey uh, in our eyes. I, I think it would go a great length um, to actually make anime more popular in Japan. So that disappointed me. And also another thing that, of course, is that because of the... I, I wouldn't say that this block is unsuccessful, but it definitely isn't overly successful. Um, some of its stuff has been enormously popular. I think there was one called, uh, oh, what's it called? Anohana? Is that the one? I can't recall, but it sold like about 30,000 units um, a copy, which is an enormous success. Um, but that's kind of been the only breakout hit. Um, everything else, you know, like the most popular ones, sell about 5,000 units um, a copy, which is it is what like I mean that's the kind of sale figures that most anime companies want to get anyway, but still that's a shame when that's kind of the most popular stuff, and then of course you get your selection of failures as well, and because of that um, you know every so often they make an anime series that is very much aimed at the otaku market. Um, I remember that when uh, they announced that they were going to put Black Rock Shooter in the Noitamana block, 
Uh, there was a lot of very disappointed people, a lot of annoyed people. You know, why is this in a Noitamina block? You know, this isn't going to expand the anime audience. But my personal opinion is that if you're going to air it after one o'clock in the morning and you're going to charge, you know, the 50 bucks, 60 bucks for a couple of episodes, you're, you're not really going to expand the audience that much. But it has a lot of potential. It definitely. The biggest thing I want to say about it is that it makes shows that don't seem to get released, you know, besides this block uh, anymore, like um, Jose shows, Shoujo shows, Senen shows, um, you know, drama shows, like Slice of Life stuff. And like, not Slice of Life in that stupid, you know, like, let's slap you and like, ha oh, that's haha -ha funny. Um, it's actually like, basically, I think the Noitamana block is really important. For the simple reason that it is different. And I think different in this, you know, um, kind of modern age of anime, where a lot of the shows are kind of just, you know, rinse, repeat. I think that's an enormous accomplishment in and of itself. And it definitely needs to be supported. But I do think that they are going about it the wrong way. And I think it can be seriously improved. Um, that's just my opinion. I, um, I don't know if what your guys' opinions are, you know, do you think that this is, you know, uh, have you heard of this block, for instance? Um, you know, if you've heard that something aired on Noitamina, does that make you want to watch it? Um, you know, do you, what do you think of their policies, the fact that it airs after one o'clock in the morning and, it, you know, has the same standard anime prices? You know, it seems self-defeating. It seems like it's going against what their message is. And the fact that every so often they have to bow down and create an otaku, um, you know, focus show, um, which is quite disappointing. Uh, but besides that, you know, it is a step that, you know, must be made at this point in anime. It is creating different shows, it's allowing, you know, certain manga to actually be adapted that might not get adapted otherwise, and I do think it's very important. So I'd like to hear your opinions on it, um, etc, etc. Uh, yeah. That's all I have to say on that. Um, just want to let you guys know, I will include that link in the description below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye bye